Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. If you're new here, hi, my name's Sam. I am a licensed cosmetologist. And if you're not new, I'm sure you've noticed we have a different kind of setup. I just got this new microphone and mic stand for my podcast, video podcast episodes coming soon. I'll have more information about that in the description, but I thought that I would just test out my new equipment. So let me know what you think as far as quality of the audio, lighting, all that kind of stuff. I'm very excited about that, but today I'm gonna be doing another client horror story. I've actually been taking a break from doing hair. I haven't done hair since this past December because I moved states and I was just experiencing burnout. This story happened right before I stopped taking clients. I wanted to share what happened and the lesson that I learned from the experience because that really is the main reason why I do these videos. Yes, they're entertaining, but I don't want to just sit here and like shit on clients. I'm just sharing experiences I had that were challenging and how I handled them and then what I learned from that experience moving forward because every bad encounter I've had with a client, whether it's something that I did wrong or if it's just like red flags that I know to look out for in the future, I always learn something and it always makes me a better stylist moving forward. This client came in, she had booked a consultation appointment and at the time I had online booking. So sometimes when clients book an appointment, they will reach out to me on Instagram or call the salon first and we'll have a little bit of a conversation so that I know who they are, what they're looking to have done. But this client just booked a consultation online herself. We had no communication prior to this, so I had no idea before she came in what to expect, you know, who she was, anything like that. And she brought her son in with her. That's not the horrific part of the story. He actually wasn't that bad. Clients bringing kids to the salon. I actually have another story about kids at the salon that Oh, one kid almost started a fire in the salon. So let me know if you'd like to hear that story. That'll be a different story for a different video. But this one wasn't bad at all. But he was very like curious about the salon. And the mom, who was my client, as a result was like very stressed and on edge. Her main focus really was on him. Like she was just constantly reprimanding him. Be quiet, sit down, stay still, don't touch anything. And as we're trying to have this consultation, she just like didn't seem very present. Like it was very hard to communicate with her because she just seemed like so on edge and she seemed like in such a rush. Like she just wanted to get in and get out super fast, which was confusing to me. I remember at the time thinking like, why book this consultation because consultations were optional. We had them as an option, as a standalone appointment. We would block out, I believe like 20 or 30 minutes and you had to pay for that time. And then if you decided to book an appointment after that, the consultation cost would go towards like the total of your appointment later on. You're paying for this appointment and she's the one that voluntarily booked it. So it just seemed very confusing to me that she just like seemed like she didn't want to be there and she was in such a rush to get out. And I was like, why'd you even book this then? Or like, why bring your kid? And I totally understand that it can be difficult finding childcare. I mean, the kid wasn't even bad. Like, I don't know, she was just like very worried about him. When she came in, her hair was jet black. She did tell me that she had box dyed it black. I'm gonna try and see if I can find the original before photo that I had taken of her hair. If not, I'll just insert a similar picture. So then when I was asking her, okay, what are you looking to do? She didn't really have an answer for me. Like oftentimes when clients come in, they already have inspiration photos or just at least like a general idea of what they want. She, did not know. She was like, I just want something different. I was like, okay, um, how different are we talking? Because obviously if your hair is jet black, you, have, you, you can't go any darker than that. So obviously if you want something different, we have to go lighter. So, okay, that's step number one. And I'm just like, I keep trying to ask her questions to try to pull out of her what she wants, which 
is fine, but it's difficult to do that when the client is not giving you their full attention and they're so focused on something else. We ended up settling on she wanted a balayage and she wanted it to be very warm. We found a few photos online that we were gonna use as inspiration and the tone that she wanted, she kept referring to as pumpkin. When I'm doing my consultations, if you've never gotten your hair done by me, you need to know I am very thorough. I ask about your hair history, everything you've done to it in the last year. We talk about what you want. I go into detail about placement and the specifics, like the nitty gritty details. Like you tell me that you want a balayage. Okay, well, how much dimension do you, and I don't even use technical terms like that. I'll literally say like, well, how much do you want any of your natural color in the ends as well? Or do you want it to be all solid blonde or pumpkin in this case. How high up do you want that color to come? Do you still want to keep your root? How, do you wear your hair up in a ponytail frequently? Do you want to see some of those highlights around your face when you pull your hair up? Or do you want it to just be all your natural color? Do you like it to be brighter and bolder around your face? Or do you want it to be like all blended evenly all throughout. I'll even ask them like what their current hair routine is. Like how often do they wash their hair? Do they style it often? Just so that way it gives me an idea too of like, are they a high maintenance person or low maintenance person with their hair? So that way I can make sure I'm giving them a color that's going to be realistic to their lifestyle. I don't want to give a low maintenance person a super high maintenance hair color. You know, like I really take my job seriously. I think about all of these things. I think it just also shows to my clients that like I really care and I really am listening. I want to hear you. I want to make sure I'm giving you something that you're going to love and that's going to work for you. You know, like I'm not just here to make money. Like I really care about what I'm doing. Anyway, all that to say I was trying to do my usual thing and be super thorough, but it was difficult to do when I felt like the conversation was kind of one-sided. But yeah, so we ended up settling on this like pumpkin balayage and we booked her appointment for, I believe the following week. She paid for the consultation and then just like rushed out of there. And you know, looking back and talking about it now, I'm like, yeah, that kind of seems like a total red flag. But at the time I remember thinking like, she doesn't really care. You know, like she just wants something different. She's tired of just the solid black color. She wants to just change it up, add some pops of color. I don't know, like she just seemed chill and laid back. And I've had a lot of clients that were like that. They were just super easy going and they were just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really want anything like super specific. I don't really care. When I would ask them all those little specific questions, they'd be like, I don't really know. Like whatever you think is best. Like I trust you, I love your work do what you think would be best for my hair. And it always works out fine. And they're just like so easy. And they're like, oh my God, I love it. Great. Thank you. And they're like, you know, willing to pay whatever your prices are. And they're just wonderful clients. And I really thought that's how she was going to be. Obviously not because if that were the case, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this video right now. Day of her appointment comes. She comes in. She does not bring her kid with her this time. And I did another quick consultation with her. I always do this just to like confirm everything we talked about before, especially if the consultation was like a week or longer ago, you know, because like I don't want them to forget anything we discussed. I want to make sure that like I didn't forget anything we discussed and I just do like a brief like refresh. And especially with her, I wanted to definitely do this because like I said, I felt like she wasn't fully paying attention the first time. So we talked about everything. She had the inspiration photo with her that we had found during her consultation. From my understanding, based on the two consultations we had, she wanted dimensional color, meaning she still wanted to see some of her black hair throughout the ends. She just wanted like bold pops of the pumpkin color. So I think I just did like my usual technique where I'll do like three back to back teased slices, then I'll leave some hair out, then I'll do three more back to back, tea slices, leave hair out, you know. So it creates like these really pretty bold ribbons of color. So it like really pops, but then you still have a little bit of that natural color running through the ends. So it's not just like a solid, like orange and then black root, 
you know, it's like really nice and blended. I'm thinking everything is going super smoothly. She came in on a Saturday, I remember, and she was my last one of the day. So she was my last client for that week. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be a great way to end the week. I have this like super laid back, cool client. We're just gonna do like a nice, fun, easy color on her. Same kind of technique that, you know, I've done a million times. It's gonna go great and super smooth and she's gonna love it and then I'll be done for the week. So anyway, I finished the color. I am blow drying her. A tip for my fellow stylists, especially if you're newer, when you're doing color on someone, I highly, highly recommend you start blow drying the front around their face. Let them see how the color looks before you blow dry the entire head. She was loving the tone. She was like, yes, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. The pumpkin. I don't know why I find that so funny. I guess it's just because I, that was the first and only time I've had someone request pumpkin hair color. But yeah, so she loved the tone. I was like, perfect, great. Did the rest of the blowout. Mind you, she has pretty thick, curly, coarse hair. So it's not like it was a quick 10 minute blowout, you know, like took me a good amount of time. And I asked her how she'd like it to be styled. And she's looking in the mirror and she's like, I don't, I don't know. This isn't what I was expecting. I don't really think it looks that different. Does it look different? I'm sorry. Does it look different? You mean, does your pumpkin balayage that I just use like three bowls of lightener to accomplish look different than your solid jet black box dyed hair that you came in with? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that it does like what does it look different it's not like i just added like a couple little pieces like a couple little blended pieces like no like we did like straight up ribbons of color i don't have any after pictures of this to show you guys unfortunately and i know that that takes away from the story and it's like hard to envision and hard to like believe what i'm telling you but you have to understand that in the moment if you do a client's hair and then they're still sitting in your chair and they're telling you that they're not happy with it, you're not going to be like, okay, I know that you hate it and you want me to fix this, but can you just hang on a second and like pose for me so I can get some pictures of it? And I'm not thinking, oh my God, I can't wait to make a video about this on YouTube. I got to make sure I get picture evidence and receipts. Like, no, in the moment you're just like kind of panicking, like, oh shit, I need to, you know, resolve this situation and try to make them happy. But she's just telling me, I don't really think it looks that different. This isn't really what I asked for. I, I said I wanted something really different. And at this point, I am about to lose it. I'm like, are you kidding me? You were giving me nothing. We did two consultations and I had to pull information out of you just to get an idea of what the hell you wanted. You were not being specific at all whatsoever. And any question that I asked you, you were just like, I don't really know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And now that I'm done, oh, this isn't what I wanted? Like, well, bitch, I don't know what you wanted because you were not being specific or clear at all. There have been past experiences and past story times where I look back and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I should have been more clear about this or I should have asked this instead. But this time around, there was nothing else that I could have done. I 100% confidently can say I did everything that I could. Talk about not knowing what the hell you want. Like she clearly just had no clue. So I, I'm just trying to figure out something and I'm like, well, you know, we can always add more color. We can add more of the pumpkin highlights, but you'd have to come in for another appointment. We would have to do that, you know, if you want to come back in a week or two. And then she goes, you didn't cover my grays. I look at her and I'm like, what grays? I am not kidding you guys. She had three strands, strands, right in like her middle part. That was it. And I honestly, I swear on everything, I didn't even notice them. That's how like small and subtle they were. When it's something like that, where it's literally just like one or two strands, I don't even want to point it out and ask like, hey, do you want me to cover these? Because some people like, I don't know, like they feel like, I, I don't know. I don't like to point out like, 
hey, I see a gray hair. She didn't mention anything about them. She didn't say anything about getting them covered. And I, so I said this to her, I was like, oh, well, you know, to be honest, I didn't even notice them. I didn't think that they were visible. Didn't know you wanted them covered. You didn't say anything about wanting to cover them or do any root color. She goes, oh, well, I just assumed that it was included. So I was like, okay, no problem. I'll go mix up some color. We'll cover up those grays for you. And um, I'll just add a little bit more lightener to your ends and we'll, we can just make it solid on the ends. We'll just, the little bit of black I left out on the ends, I'll cover right over that and we'll just do solid pumpkin. How's that sound? So I go to mix up her root color. I literally took like a little pea size amount of color and a little squirt of developer because that's literally all she needed. And then I just took some lightener and I just grabbed her. I didn't even bother doing like foils and all that. I literally just took her ends and I just grabbed the lightener and I just slapped it on there and I just like blended it with my hands. And I was like, there we go. Just let her process for a little bit, rinsed it out toned it. She ended up being happy in the end, but at that point, I think we both were just feeling like annoyed with each other. And I shouldn't have lightened her anymore. That's a whole second appointment. Like you're not gonna get two appointments for the price of one. Like that's just not fair. At that point, I knew that I was gonna be moving and I wasn't gonna be doing hair anymore. So I was just at that point, I was like, whatever. I honestly don't even care and I don't even want her to come back again to have to do a second appointment. So I was like, I'm just gonna slap some lightener on her ends and just get her the hell out of here. <laughs> As I was styling her hair, we were talking about her wanting to come in because she, like I said, had really curly hair and she was looking to go to a salon every Saturday to get her hair washed and blown out and styled. And I was like, oh, hell no. Because first of all, I was just really annoyed with her at this point. Like, I didn't really want her as a client. Second of all, I knew I was leaving soon anyway. And third of all, I am a color specialist. So just doing blowouts is like, I'm not interested in that. And it's just not really worth the time for the money, you know? Like, I could be doing color instead during that time. That's what I actually am passionate about and what I love doing and what I spent so much time and money mastering. So I ended up telling her, actually, I'm gonna be moving away in a few weeks, but there's this other stylist in the area that is amazing. She specializes in curly hair. She's so great. Her work's amazing. I really think that you guys would hit it off. So I pulled up this girl's Instagram page and she was like, oh my God, I love this. This is so great. So yeah, she ended up paying, leaving, and that was that. Last time I ever saw her, heard from her again. Don't know if she ended up going to that other Silas that I had referred her to. But let's talk about the lessons that I learned from this, because like I said, that really is the main point of sharing these stories. The first lesson I think is, you know, I talk about red flags all the time. In a lot of my story time videos, I'm like, oh, I should have saw these red flags. This time around, I really didn't think there were any red flags. Like I said, she really just came off as like easygoing and laid back and I thought that she was gonna be a breeze as a client. And then the second thing is sometimes you can do everything right and do the best job possible, be super thorough, and then they're still not happy in the end. That just goes to show that these kinds of situations are unavoidable sometimes. Sometimes you're just not the right fit for a client and the client's not the right fit for you. Some people just don't know what the hell they want. But yeah, that's the story of the pumpkin balayage girl that didn't know what the hell she wanted. Don't forget, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this whole setup and the quality. And also let me know if you wanna hear the story time about my client's kids that ran wild in the salon and almost lit it on fire. By the way, if you live in the Southeast North Carolina area, I am going to be taking clients again, starting now on the occasional Saturday by appointment only. I will be accepting clients in Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm gonna have a link to an appointment request form you have to fill out that form and then I will reach out to you from there about setting up an actual appointment. Appointments are gonna be on Saturdays only and availability is very limited. So if you're in the area and you would like to get your hair done by me, 
fill out that form. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, give this video a like, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.